It's time for NFL Ladder. In other words, uh, after every week of football, we do this every Tuesday, uh, we release our top five teams, right? We rank them in order from one through five, and we do this after every week of football on this channel every Tuesday. Anyway, here we go. It's time for NFL Ladder on Speak Plainly Sports. At number five, I have the Cowboys. Now, this is a team I got wrong. Okay, I said this team wouldn't make the playoffs. Not because I didn't think they'd be good. I said in my predictions that they would be that team that could hurt you, right? They would be able to compete with the best, just not get over the hump. And I think I've been a little conditioned with the Cowboys just because every year, right, they look good, it starts good, and then, you know, it all falls apart, right? And there's always been something that just kind of prevents this team from running at 100%, from, you know, uh, doing what everyone says they're going to do. Because every year they're going to win a Super Bowl. Every year they're the best team in football. Every year they got the best this, the best that. And by the end of the year, like, what happened to the Cowboys? This is the first time I've watched the Cowboys in a long time where I actually believe. Like, I'm starting to buy in to the whole Dallas Cowboys, you know, uh, uh, message or whatever, right? I, I buy into this team. They're legit, right? They played the Buccaneers tough. They beat the Chargers. Once again, you can argue calls and this and that. They got the W. Bottom line is the Cowboys have the W. The Chargers don't. Like, that's how football works, okay? And as of right now, they're 4-1, and one, and they're blowing teams out. They're blowing teams out. And what I like is it's a balanced offense. I love balanced offenses, right? Right now, Dak, uh, 273 yards per game. He's third in passing touchdowns, right, on the year. Uh, the offense, though, has the second best rush attack in football behind the Cleveland Browns. They're averaging 173 yards per game. That's because Zeke is starting to run like Zeke again. He has five touchdowns on the year. And Tony Pollard, right? It's a one-two punch, kind of like what's going on with the Browns, right? With Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. The, the, the Cowboys have a one-two punch, too. The difference between the Cowboys and the Browns, though, is the Cowboys have a quarterback by the name of Dak Prescott, who I personally would say is better, right, than Baker Mayfield. Like, this Cowboy team is legit. And boy, do they have weapons, right? CeeDee Lamb is a weapon. Amari Cooper is a weapon. Cedric Wilson is a weapon. Like, this team has weapons, right? The tight end, uh, Dalton Schultz, I believe his name is. Yeah, Dalton Schultz. He's another weapon, right? Even their running backs can catch the ball out of the backfield. This is why the Cowboys offense is putting up points like crazy, right? They're second in rush offense, their 11th in pass offense, right? And it's a balanced offense with a franchise quarterback, Mike McCarthy, right? His second year with the Cowboys, they're starting to look like a good team. Then they hired Dan Quinn, right? And they spent eight of their 11 draft picks on defense, right? And it's had an impact, but in a weird way. Like when you look at them statistically, they're 31st against the pass. You would think you can throw against the Cowboys, but their defense has been coming up big in moments. And that's more important than stats, by the way. That's all you can ask of a defense. Be big on a third down. Be big in a crucial moment, right? You may not be able to stop quarterbacks in today's you know, NFL because it's more of a passing league. Don't stop them. Just come up big. Reserve everything for that big third down. Reserve everything for that big moment. And that's what this defense has been doing. That's why they've been coming up with all kinds of turnovers, right? Trayvon Diggs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I believe he leads the NFL in interceptions, right? The draft pick Micah Parsons out of Penn State. I mean, I believe he leads the Cowboys in sacks, right? They also have Randy Gregory, uh, Osa Odigizua, who's also been big, right? Like, this team is really good. They have that other safety, J. Ron Curse, who actually leads the Cowboys in tackles, by the way. Like, this team has a defense. It has an offense. I know their defense statistically isn't the best against the pass, but if you've been watching the Cowboys play, that defense has been coming up big in big moments, and they've been getting the ball back for their offense. So far, year to date, Dan Quinn has done a really good job with this Cowboys defense. And as of today, as of right now, I have them fifth in my NFL ladder. At number four, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay, The only reason why I don't have them higher is their secondary. It's banged up. 
But mark my word, it's going to be better by the time the playoffs come. Right now, they're 32nd against the pass. That's because SMB, right? Sean Murphy Bunton is injured. Uh, Carlton Davis is injured. Antoine Winfield was injured there for a second, right? Like, they've been dealing with injuries. Jamel Dean got injured. Like, and in spite of having the worst secondary in football, they're still 4-1. and one. You know why? Because they still have that crazy pass rush. They have JPP. Shaq Barrett, who's been catching fire the last couple games, by the way, right? That kid, Joe Tryon, who they drafted, I believe, out of Washington. He's starting to find his place. Uh, uh, Levante David and Devin White, right? They're still one of the best linebacker duos in football, okay? This team is number one against the run defensively. Now, all the problems have been with their secondary, and to be fair to their secondary, they're just banged up. But they're going to be healthier. All the people that are writing off the Bucks, they're going to regret it by the time the playoffs come. Because by the time the playoffs come, that secondary is going to be healthy. And now that they signed Richard Sherman, watch out. Watch out. You're going to see this secondary that's ranked dead last, right, be 15th or higher by the time the postseason comes. So that's their defense. When you look at their offense, there's a good chance Tom Brady's going to win an MVP this year. He's number one in passing yards. He's second in passing touchdowns. He only has two interceptions on the year. And he leads the NFL with 28 passes of 20 yards or longer. To everyone that said Tom Brady can't throw the deep pass anymore, he's number one in the NFL right now. Okay, he's number one. If he keeps this pace at the age of 44 going on 45, he will win an MVP award, which is insane. The Bucks' offense right now is third in scoring. It's by like a tenth of a point, right? They're third in scoring. Uh, they have AB and Mike Evans who went off against the Dolphins. Both of them had over 100 yards and two touchdowns each. Rob Gronkowski will be back. They did that without Rob. Keep in mind that when they played those other teams, Rob Gronkowski wasn't there, right? Leonard Fournette is becoming the primary back, which I think is important. Giovanni Bernard is finding his place on third downs. He had another touchdown uh, uh, against the Dolphins. Chris Godwin is a total Tom Brady receiver. This team has weapons. It has an excellent O-line. It has the GOAT quarterback. It has the number one run defense. And mark my word, by the time the playoffs come, that secondary is going to be a thousand times better than it is today. Do not lose track of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In the end, they will be one of the teams that have one of the best chances to repeat as Super Bowl champions. At number three, I have the Arizona Cardinals, the undefeated Arizona Cardinals. Now you can say, well, if Minnesota does this, they win the game, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the year, every team can do that. Every team can look at their schedule and say, if, you know, a flag didn't happen, an interception didn't happen, this call didn't happen. It's called football. It's called football, okay? You can't argue the nature of something against itself. Every team has that gripe. Every team can point to three, four games that could have gone the other way. The bottom line is the Cardinals are undefeated and they have five wins in a row and they're the only team in the NFL that is still undefeated. And they got a quarterback by the name of Kyler Murray who's not too bad, right? He can pass the ball. He can run with the ball, right? He can do it both. He Right now, he is six in passing yards with over 300 yards per game. He has 10 passing touchdowns. He has three rushing touchdowns, and oh yeah, they're eighth. Right now their offense is eighth in the rush attack. They have Chase Edmonds and James Conner, who they picked up from the Steelers. So their offense is seventh in pass attack and eighth in the rush attack. Once again, they have a well-balanced offense. They can pass the ball, they can hand the ball off, or Kyler Murray himself can run with the ball. There is a reason why this team is 5-0. and oh. They also have a defense. They're eighth against the pass right now and they're 28th against the run i like teams that are better against the pass i feel that's more pertinent right when you get to the playoffs they have a a cornerback by the name of byron murphy right now who is tied for second in the nfl in interceptions with three interceptions on the year he's been going off and then they have one of the best safeties in football in buddha baker they have the uh, other safety jalen thompson this team has talent right they also signed J.J. Watt in the offseason. They have another player by the name of Chandler Jones, who's in the top five in QB sacks. Right now, this team is 11th in QB sacks. They're fourth in blitz percentage, okay? 
and, and they're also, I believe, 11th in QB hits. Okay, so they're balanced. They can throw the ball, they can run the ball, they can hand the ball off and run it that way also, and their defense can come up with stops. They can stop the pass, and even though they're 28th in run defense, sometimes that stack can be overblown, right? Sometimes that stack can be overblown because it depends on the game, the situation, the circumstances, right? I'm more interested in teams and how good you do against the pass because to me, in today's NFL, you have to be a top 10 pass defense if you're going to have any chance of making the playoffs, making any noise in the playoffs, and or winning a Super Bowl. So as of today, right now, uh, uh, in my NFL ladder, I have the Arizona Cardinals at number three. At number two, I have the LA Chargers. I'm probably going to get pushback on this one. I'm probably going to get pushback. But think about the wins they have so far. They beat the Browns. They beat the Cowboys, they beat the Chiefs, and they beat the Raiders. Now you can look at every one of those games and say, oh, if this doesn't happen and that doesn't happen, you know, that's Monday quarterbacking. Bottom line is they got the W. They won the game. You know what I like about Brandon Staley, the head coach, is the trust he shows his quarterback and his team. The way he lets this team go for it on fourth down. The way he refuses to give the other team power over them. He'd rather keep the power of winning in their own hands. And I love coaches who coach this way and recognize that they have the talent to do so. And this team is talented. Justin Herbert, every time I look up, he's breaking another record. Year to date, 315 yards per game, 13 passing touchdowns, both fourth in the NFL. He's in his second year and he's top five in passing yards and top five in touchdowns. They have arguably one of the best receiving cores in football. It's definitely a top five. Mike Williams, who went off against the Browns, Keenan Allen, Jalen Guyton, and Jared Cook, who they picked up from the Saints. That is an elite receiving core with an elite quarterback, with an elite head coach that just wins games and games and games against big-time opponents. This team offensively, Total team offense, they're third in passing yards. They're 17th in the run game, but that's just because they pass the ball so much. And defensively, they're seventh against the pass. Now, someone might say, well, they're in last place against the run. In today's NFL, it's better to have a secondary, right, than it is to stop the run. And I don't want to explain why that is. It just is. The NFL has turned into a passing league. The teams that have offenses that can score the ball are the teams that tend to make it to the playoffs and tend to win Super Bowls in today's NFL. This team has an offense and a defense, right? They got Joey Bosa, outside linebacker. They got uh, uh, Derwin James, one of the best cornerbacks in the game. They drafted Asante Samuel in the second round, who leads the Chargers in interceptions, right? Uh, Drew Tranquil, the linebacker, uh, who they picked up in the fourth round a few years back. I forget the year, but he was out of Notre Dame. This team has offensive weapons, this team has defensive weapons, and they're well coached. And after five weeks of football, they deserve to be number two in my NFL ladder. At number one, I have the Buffalo Bills. Yes, the Buffalo Bills. And it's not because they beat Kansas City. Although that was a big win, right? It's a mental thing, right? Kansas City was the team that was preventing the Bills from getting to a Super Bowl. It's a mental thing. But it's not that impressive to beat Kansas City anymore. The Bucks destroyed them in the Super Bowl, right? The Chargers have beat them. The Ravens have beat them. And now the Bills destroyed them. It's not because they beat KC that I have them number one. Right now in total yards on offense, right? When you do rush yards and pass yards, they're number one offensively. When you look at their defense, right, their total team defense, they're number one. They're the number one scoring defense, you know, points allowed in the NFL right now. This team is loaded everywhere and it's balanced. That's what makes this team so impressive is that there is a nice balance to this team. Josh Allen's numbers aren't as, as big as they were last year, but that's okay because they have a rush attack this year. Their fifth in the run game right now. The Bills are fifth in the run game right now, right? They have Zach Moss and Devin Singletary, right? So it's not all on Josh Allen. If you can stop the pass, they can run the ball on you. If you can stop the run, they can throw the ball on you, just like the Chiefs found out, right? The Bills aren't one-dimensional. Same thing with their defense. 
they loaded up their D-line. Gregory Rousseau was a huge pickup in the draft, right? But they still have Matt Milano. They have Carlos Boogie Basham. Like, they're loaded. Their D-line, I think they have something like 9, 10, 11 players on their D-line, right? But it's not just that. The same way they're balanced on offense, they're balanced on defense. They don't just have a pass rush. They have a mean secondary, right? A legit secondary. Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, Levi Wallace, Trey Davius White, and Taron Johnson. Like, any one of those names and those players can get at you. Trey Davius White is a top 10 cornerback in the NFL. Levi Wallace is making a case for himself. And Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, the one-two punch as safeties, this team's loaded. And they're well coached, okay? This is the team, I believe, that should come out of the AFC Conference or will at least make it to an AFC Championship. Whoever beats this team is going to have to bring it. And as of today, right now, they are my number one in my poll. Hey everyone, thank you for watching SP Sports today. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. This way you are notified when we post new videos. Also, if you have a moment, leave a comment and check out our other videos.